Hey guys, how's it all going over there? Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, busy driving at the moment as you can see and I thought I'd uh, tell you about my car because I've actually had quite a few questions lately about, uh, about the car that I drive. First of all, it's not a, a Tata or anything. <laughs> it's a Chinese brand. Uh, the brand is called, well, it's called Rich. That's R-I-I-C-H. And Rich is the sort of luxury subsidiary of Cherry. Cherry is the company that makes the, the Chevy Spark Deu Matiz knockoff uh, QQ thing. Um, but they're one of the better known, better brands in China. Now, what can I say about this car? I absolutely love this car. Why do I love it? Because, first of all, it's cheap. Okay, now, why would I like a cheap car, you might ask? Um, well, let me explain something to you. My car has uh, a multitude of scratches, scrapes, dings, and dents on it now, all around it. But not, not one of those is my fault. And not one of those has occurred from a traffic accident. Every single one is from me leaving it in a parking lot and some inexperienced driver reversing into my car, opening the door into my car, scraping my car and then driving off. So if I had a expensive car, let's say if I'd spent, you know, a hundred thousand or more on a car, I'd be crying because every time, you know, and this happens often, I mean, it, I've had the car for about two years now, almost two years, and it's, it's kind of a monthly occurrence that you get a new scratch or a scrape or a ding because of some inexperienced driver. Um, obviously not too bad, I can go get most of them buffed out and polished out, but still, it's annoying. And uh, like I said, if I had an expensive car, I'd cry. How much did the car cost? In total, with uh, insurance and the licensing and all that, it cost, I think it was exactly 50,000 RMB, Wu Wang Kui Chen, which is in US dollars, I have no idea. I can work that out, I'll put it here somewhere. Okay, so that's uh, number one. Second reason why I love it so much, it's very economical. Okay, on uh, 300 RMB worth of gas, petrol as I call it, gas is what the Yanks would say, um, I will get 500 kilometers plus. Actually, I will get about 520 kilometers range on 300 RMBs worth of petrol. This is because it's a small, light little car and it has a, um, a small engine. It's got a one liter engine, a thousand cc. But that doesn't mean it's sluggish or slow because it's a, it's a Toyota engine. It's, uh, well, a copy anyway. It's a four-cylinder, 16-valve, uh, fuel-injected engine mated to a five-speed manual gearbox. So, of course, if you know how to drive, um, and uh, especially if you're good at driving manuals, you can get good performance out of the car and uh, obviously good fuel economy. So, you know, it's got great benefits. Another benefit, of course, is because it's small, you can park it just about anywhere. And uh, in this city, Shenzhen city, parking is atrocious. It's really, really difficult to find a parking. So having the advantage of being able to squeeze into a little space somewhere, excellent. Yeah. Also, another thing I like is for the price I paid, it comes with a huge amount of features. Uh, of course, electric windows, air conditioning, uh, power steering, you know, all those kind of things, which might sound standard to all you uh, guys living in America, but uh, if you live in a place like South Africa, for instance, or Europe even, those are optional extras and usually cost a lot more money. Uh, what else? It, in the glove compartment, or cubby hole, as we call it, uh, there's a USB port. You can plug in a USB stick with MP3s on it, and it plays MP3s, which is, I think, an awesome little feature. Of course, it's also got a CD player built in, a radio and all that nonsense. So it's actually fairly well equipped, especially for the price you pay. It's actually very well equipped, I think. Um, what else? It's also pretty safe. It's got a four-star safety rating, which I don't know if I believe that or not, but um, you know, it makes me feel a little better. <laughs> uh, anything else? Well, I suppose that more or less sums it up. I have now driven, at the moment, 27,023 uh, kilometers in this car, and uh, I've experienced no technical faults whatsoever. It's all 100%. 
So for all of you people out there which rightfully think Chinese car quality manufacture is bad, uh, perhaps you could start to rethink that. They are getting better. Um, I, I would not begin to say that they're on the same level as uh, international manufacturers, but they certainly are getting a lot better. So um, this car has been wonderful, absolutely fantastic, works like a charm. And uh, I've taken it on long trips before. I rode, uh, drove with Beer Girl back to her hometown, um, which was far away. You know, it was about, oh, I can't remember, more than, I think it was about 2,000 kilometers away or 1,000 something, whatever. A long trip and without any issues or worries. I'll show you, uh, just to give you an idea of the size, I'm going to show you a picture of the car with Beer Girl standing next to it. Um, the, the model, if anyone is interested in, is a, it's an M1, so it's the rich M1. This does come uh, with another variant, uh, which has a 1.4 liter engine in it, which is probably way too much overkill for a car this size. But um, yeah, fantastic little thing. And uh, yeah, that's the Cherry logo, by the way. The rich logo looks like a Bentley logo, except with an R on it. Uh, I'm sure I can give you a shot of that soon. Well, as you can see, it's been raining a lot, but I thought it's really funny. See the logo on my car? Well, it looks like a Bentley logo, except with an R instead of a B. Oh yes, another thing that I have to mention about this car that I forgot is that it has ABS and also EBD, which means electronic brake distribution. Um, and it works really well, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna lie, if this car didn't have ABS, um, I would have seen my house a few times. Yeah, I've, it's definitely saved me more than once. Um, especially when the roads are wet around here and people don't know how to drive, sudden, suddenly people pull out in front of you or whatever the case. Um, having that sort of technology in your car is, you know, it's a lifesaver really. So, you know, it's, it's a very complete package, this car. I'll, what I'll do is let me just pull over to the side of the road here, put my warning lights on. Okay, now I'm going to turn the ignition off. Okay, and then I would like you to see when you turn it on, you'll see all the lights coming on, should give you an idea. Okay, yeah, it's got, uh, oh, why is the ABS light? Well, anyway, you can see it's got uh, lots of little gizmos coming on there. Let's do this like this, okay. Let's put it on. Yeah, that's the ABS light over there. Okay, you can see it's got everything that, uh, you know, a car should have. Uh, it's got a relatively nice little uh, computer built in, which, you know, tells you how many, um, well, tells you a fuel economy. As you're driving, it'll tell you, see that, that will tell you how many liters per kilometer you're using. Okay. You know, so it's quite nice. It tells you, you know, how you're economizing. Of course, it's got a trip meter. That's, you know, what I've done so far since I filled up. Um, and if you turn the radio off, or sorry, the MP3 thing off, it'll tell you how much distance you've got left. That's until the next service. And that's the distance you've got left, uh, you know, on your current tank of petrol. Which is quite cool, because clock and all that stuff. So, yes, that's your very cheap sort of Chinese car. But uh, it's loaded with all sorts of extras, like I said, CD player, MP3 player, uh, radio, all the usual stuff, cup, cup holder, or coffee holder anyway. Um, yeah, that's it. So that's my car. If you have any other questions about it, please let me know. It's a wonderful little thing. Uh, I think it's great. Yeah, there, there is one other thing I wanted to say. Uh, a lot of you out there, especially, uh, I, I fully understand, people living in America, people living in Europe, South Africa, wherever you're from, um, you might think, ah, little cars suck and all that nonsense. I used to think the same thing. That's why I used to own a, a 66 GTO and a 78 Trans Am and uh, various larger 126 model Mercedes-Benz. Um, before I came to China, I actually owned uh, over, you know, since I started driving anyway, I owned uh, 14 cars, so I've pretty much driven everything that's available and uh, I have to say that uh, obviously I have my favorites from back in the day, but this car is just fantastic. It's changed my mind on small cars. I never thought that I would ever be comfortable driving 
a tiny little car, I would, uh, you know, my ego wouldn't be able to handle it, you know. But, um, you know, there you go. Small cars are actually really awesome. In the ideal situation, the ideal world, I'd have this car for every day and I would have a nice big banger for, you know, special occasions and weekends and, and showing off, you know, that kind of thing. But we'll see, you know, who knows? Maybe there's, uh, there's room for that later in the future. So, cool. Anyway, guys, I hope that it answers all your questions about my car. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon with another, either another China How It Is or another Food for Foreigners. So, that's it. That's me for now. Cheers.